Hello and welcome to the Serve the Wyoming Way podcast brought to you by the Grizzly Six. Six. Today is our third episode and our second visit with Chief Coker, the fire chief of the Warland Fire Department. Our goal for this broadcast is to provide awareness to conversations our leaders are having across the state with leaders from various professions as we continue strengthening our partnerships within Wyoming industries. Additionally, we hope to help educate our listeners about opportunities both in the Wyoming Army National Guard and volunteer opportunities in their very own communities. I'm CW4 Nathan Galloway with the Wyoming Public Affairs Office, and I'll be facilitating this podcast here in the Ramcota Inn in Casper, Wyoming, as the firefighters and representatives from across the state finish up their 62nd annual Wyoming Rural Firefighting Meeting. Um, I'd like to welcome our guest on today's show. Uh, We've got Fire Chief Chris Coker, the Fire Chief for the Warland Volunteer Fire Department. Chief Coker currently leads the Warland Fire District, which consists of 26 volunteers with two full-time employees, a part-time bookkeeper, five elected board members, and and, and houses the Regional Emergency Response Team 6 Hazard Material Truck and Trailer as well as decontamination unit for the state of Wyoming. Chief Coker is originally from Butte, Montana and started as a a volunteer firefighter, eventually becoming the assistant chief and has served full time as the fire chief for the last 12 years. Did I get all that right, Chief? That's pretty much, yeah. Pretty close. Well, welcome to to our show this morning. We also got uh, joining us this morning, our second guest is Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas Reyes. Colonel Reyes is currently serving as the executive officer of the 115th Field Artillery Brigade headquartered in Cheyenne. And he was recently selected for command of 94 Troop Command in Laramie, Wyoming. He'll take command in early January. Colonel Reyes brings a variety of active duty and National Guard assignments with him over the course of his, uh, looks like just over 19 years of service, sir, um, to both our state and nation. So welcome to you as well to our to our uh, our show this morning. And, uh, so let's just dive into the conversation. Chief Coker, let's start with you. Um, we may have some repeat listeners. We may have some new listeners. Tell us a little bit about the, the Warland Fire Department, Volunteer Fire Department. Well, you know, as a community, we're not too dissimilar to a lot of the other communities in our state. Um, we have uh, 26 folks currently on the department. Um, I serve as the county fire warden as well, and then we have the Tensley Volunteer Fire Department, and they, uh, they're they active over on the that side of the county as well. But with that, we respond to pretty much anything um, that is in need. So we respond to hazardous material, run, respond to structure fire, car fire, wildland fire, um, oil field, uh, fire and emergencies. We respond to car wrecks for extrication and rescue. Um, so we do a little bit of everything. But you know, that in conjunction with our law enforcement partners and our EMS partners, um, they are the emergency responders in our community. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I some of the notes that were provided to me, you know, this is my first time meeting you and, and, and learning about the Warland Fire, uh, Volunteer Fire Department. It says, uh, the information I got says you currently respond to between 180 and 200 calls annually? Well, that, that's, that's a little bit older number. Um, right now we respond to roughly 200 to 250 calls a year. With 26 volunteers? We, we do that with 26 volunteers, yes. That's, that's incredible. Wow. That's incredible, and and so, um, I guess, I guess yeah, I understand that that your fire volunteer fire department has uh, crossed paths with the Wyoming Guard in the past, um, in in some situations. We have we've we've actively worked on several different uh, events, um, both the ice jam floods mm. in 2014 and 2017. Um, very close working relationship with them. Um, we've worked on wildland fires, um, not only in our area, but throughout the state and throughout the United States with um, the Wyoming Guard and the U.S. Military Department. So there, there definitely is a partnership there. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, which, and, which we'd love to, 
which, which we love to, to continue growing. Hey, uh, Colonel Reyes, let's, let's talk, uh, you know, you, you're wearing an interesting hat right now, you know, as the XO of the 115th, which I believe Warland falls right square in the middle of the 115th footprint up there. Um, so yes, you're, we have a detachment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, then, and then as well as uh, you're going to take over 94th Troop Command. Yes. And there are some changes coming in the Troop Command footprint that, that may, may facilitate you crossing paths with Chief Coker and his crew at some point as, as, we, as we answer our state's call for our, mission, our state mission. Right. We have a new infantry company that's standing up and a uh, detachment from that unit is supposed to be stationed in Warland. In, in Warland. And we're in the process of getting the personnel and equipment for that unit. Right on. Right on. So this is actually fairly uh, yeah. fortuitous that, that the two of you are meeting because down down the road, you know, have, heaven forbid yeah. that you that, you know that your next meeting's in a setting like this instead of something else. Uh, it, it is certainly easier to have these meetings uh, in a low key environment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before emergencies happen, absolutely. But even even you know as 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 we all know, you know, things happen. Emergency response re needs happen. Um, the, the Wyoming Guard is very responsive uh, under the governor's call for, for state emergencies, as, as is the vol volunteer fire department under the needs of your, of your county, I guess. You cover the, uh, an entire county, or what, what is your geographical area? Well, Washington County is about 2,200 square miles. Okay. And like I say, in that, we have the Worland um, Fire Protection District, and we have the Tensley Fire Protection District, and they each cover roughly half of the county. Okay. They're the same footprints as the school districts. Right on. Okay. Okay. So, you know, but, but uh, this meeting in this low-key environment, as you call it, is, is a, a, a great way to start the relationship with, yeah. with uh, the fire chief of the county and, and the future commander of, of, the, the, of the local unit. Um, so down the road when when things get sideways as we know they eventually will you guys will know each other so that's a great partnership building block right here that absolutely. we're doing today absolutely for for sure chief Co, can i ask you a question sure um, you had mentioned working with law enforcement and ems partners but do you work with other agencies as well we do we we work with homeland security uh, we work with search and rescue we work with uh, industrial and private partners um, so there's certainly a very wide variety of uh, organizations. Um, our, our farm and ranch, our partners are, are huge um, contributors okay. to that. Um, and then also um, state uh, assets mm -hmm. like the State Fire Marshal's Office, okay. uh, State Forestry, um, Homeland Security obviously again. Um, and, we, and we have some Firewise projects as well. With state forestry. Okay. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Hey, uh, let, let, let's talk about benefits of service a little bit. Um, you know, this this is my second podcast working for the for the uh, public affairs office there in Cheyenne, and, and I, yeah, I'm sure you know Chief Coy out of Cheyenne. I do. Yes. Um, so he he told us a little bit about there are some maybe some retirement ben, uh, pension benefits for volunteers and. Absolutely. Are there sim similar programs in, 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 in your districts? Absolutely. So one of the things that, you know, in this day and age, we never stop recruiting. We're always looking for volunteer firefighters because as, as the community as a whole, um, both internally and externally, um, becomes more mobile. Mm -hmm. um, People's lives change. People's jobs change. They, take, they bring them into the community and they take them out of the community, certainly. So we have to continually look for folks. And so um, there's a lot of folks that talk about how they may or may not have time to engage and do something like the fire department. And quite honestly, we find that some of the busiest people are the best people for that because they know how to manage their time. Mm. And if it's something they want to do, they will work to prioritize it. There you go. They make they prioritize and, and it. And that, that becomes a big issue. And so... Um, with that being said, yes, we absolutely take advantage of the Wyoming Volunteer uh, Retirement System. Um, and and we, we pay for the pension once they get um, off probation in our community. And uh, work to try and 
make that a an avenue that they can use for potentially retiring down the road um, and and just for you know uh, maybe maybe somebody's not familiar with that retirement pension um, tell us tell us a little bit about that well so it, it costs roughly about 1875 I believe a month for each individual um, when they serve if they serve for five years um, in the Wyoming Fire Service it doesn't have to be in one specific department but in the Wyoming Fire Service and they continue with that pension after five years they're vested okay so once that happens um, at age 60 they have the opportunity to start receiving payments and uh, distributions so uh, it's based on how many how many months and years they serve okay they very to, well to determine um, what the, what that looks like in the end um, if you know somebody that's does five years and, and they get out and they maybe not are not engaged anymore if they leave it in until they turn 60 they're going to see somewhere in the neighborhood of roughly 150 or so a month which is not a lot um, and then somebody that, that serves for you know 15 or 20 years and they um, they work to uh, get closer to 60 um, if they if they go if they get in it say 25 years old mm -hmm. you know and they go continuously through um, and they pay in after they get out because they can do a mere service um, after they retire from the fire department and continue to con have contribution there um, you could be looking at $650 a month which um, <clears throat> for a lot of our younger folks that they're, they're that may not be looking at financial planning moving forward if you talk to some of your financial planners um, and find out what it takes um, in, in liquid assets mm -hmm. to achieve a, a monthly payment of $650 or even $150, um, it's significant. Yeah, for sure. You know, you, you said something that sparked my that, that sparked my interest. Um, once you once you start paying into the pension program in Wyoming, yeah, I, I think you said that it's transferable. Absolutely, if, it is. If, if I live in Warland for five or six years and I'm part of your fire district and I'm and I'm active, but then my job or a job comes open in Lincoln County, um, I, I can take my firefighting um, desire there, and that pension transfers over. That that sounds a lot like something that would benefit yeah. the guard a lot. Yeah, absolutely. You had mentioned mobility, <coughs> Chief, and you know, we have uh, an issue, with, not an issue, but in the guard as our soldiers are, are in longer and they're desiring other positions, they often have to move around or their civilian careers will take them to different locations in the state or surrounding. Um, but it sounds like you might have a similar issue as well. Absolutely. And in this day and age, um, the transient nature Mm -hmm. of uh, everybody's jobs um, brings them into the communities that very seldom do you have somebody that you know comes out of high school maybe you know whether they go to college or not and then they go to work for a company for that 30 or 40 mm -hmm. years I mean that's you know that that happened a lot over the years but in today's world that's just not the reality of, of how jobs happen yeah, it seems pretty rare. It, yeah, absolutely. It, it, it absolutely does. But I was, I, I was thinking that we, you know, guardsmen are, are very similar in, in that aspect in the Wyoming Guard is, you know, a guy can live and work up in, in, in Gillette somewhere, maybe work, you know, and, and then the change in life, whatever. He's got to move into Uinta uh, Uinta County, down into another corner of the state. Uh, he can change guard units, stay with the Wyoming Guard. Um, as well as transfer benefits of, of, of being a Wyoming firefighter resource. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's very flexible. There's, we, we've had folks come into our community and, you know, bring with them their, their, their pension benefits and uh, vice versa. We've had folks that have, their jobs have taken them other places and, uh, you know, their, their pension is available, you know, to be reinstated 